All right, so we're going to move in to talking about um, single sample t-tests um, and just some basic background information um, about single sample t-tests and how you would go about calculating them in JASP. Um, just some very basics. If you aren't really completely familiar with um, what a t-distribution is or the different kinds of t-tests, um, a t-distribution is used when we don't know all of the population information, which is a fairly common occurrence. It's not often that you're just given all of the um, potential information about a specific population. So what we do is we'll take um, a sample from that population and we'll try to use the information that we've gathered from that sample to estimate the population information. Um, and going along with that, there are a few different types of t-tests. There are single sample t-tests, dependent t-tests, and independent t-tests. I've already touched on independent and dependent t-tests in previous videos, um, which you can also find and go watch if you need some assistance in those areas. Um, but just to kind of briefly review, an independent t-test is when you're comparing two means from two separate samples or two separate or independent groups of people. Um, uh, we started out with the cloak data, and so to run the independent t, um, we wanted to see if people who were given an invisibility cloak were more mischievous than those who were not given an invisibility cloak. Um, so we were comparing two independent groups of people, those groups were completely separate. Um, for a dependent t-test, you're looking at the same participants but measured more than once. And so just going along with the cloak example, rather than seeing if cloak versus no cloak produced some kind of significant difference, we were looking at um, whether or not the people who were given an invisibility cloak were more mischievous in week two versus week one. We wanted to see if there was a difference there, um, and if so, which week were they more mischievous in. So you see that in the dependent t-test, we were comparing the same participants, and so we were aware of the matched nature of the data. It was the same participant, just measured more than once. Um, in a single sample t-test, you have one sample or one group, and you're not comparing that with another group, or you're not comparing that with itself. Rather, you are comparing it with the population mean. So you're comparing it against the population mean. Um, so we would use the single sample t-test if we do know the population mean, but just not the standard deviation. So the theory for the t-tests is still pretty similar. Um, mean difference, but rather than it being the mean difference between um, two different samples, in this case it's the difference between the sample mean and the population mean over standard error. So, and each of those things, you can calculate t by hand, you can calculate standard error by hand, but I will show you that it is much easier to let JASP or any other statistics program do it for you, um, and that's just something that JASP will do. So now that we've kind of touched on some of the basics, I'll just go ahead and show you how simple it is to get a single sample t, or one sample t, in um, JASP. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, that this data is now looking at um, just the level of mischievousness. Mis yep, that's a word, I think. Anyway. Um, we're going to look at the participants' um, average number of mischievous acts and see if that information from that sample um, can be used to estimate some population information here. Or to see, we're pretty much going to see if this sample compares with the population that we have drawn it from. So I'm just going to choose mischief, and I'm just going to move that over. And literally, that is it. So it has given me my t. Um, 
my degrees of freedom and my p-value and um, you're not going to want to click mean difference in this situation because you're not really comparing it to another group specifically. You're comparing it to the population. Um, another thing that you're going to want to do is calculate effect size. Um, that is another thing that you can do by hand. An effect size, to calculate Cohen's D, it's just the sample mean minus the population mean over the population standard deviation. But once again, you literally just click a button and JASP will do it for you. So it really is very simple. Um, and you can also click and it will tell you the confidence intervals. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much just how you would um, run a single sample or a one sample um, t-test in JASP.